Hi. Now if you watched my earlier tutorial, I showed you how to solve equations like these. And this is just a follow-up exercise that you might like to try. So uh, just give you a moment to copy these questions down, pause the video and uh, come back when ready and you can check your work solutions with mine. And if you're unsure of how to do these, do just go back to my website, look under Linear Equations and you should find the series of videos. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Now, to solve any of these equations, what we've got to essentially do is put the x terms on one side of the equals and the constants on the other side of the equals. And it doesn't matter which side you decide to put the x terms on, although I did say in the tutorial, try and put them on the side that has got the bigger of the two x terms. So uh, let's take this one here. We've got 8x, we've got 5x. 8x is the bigger of the two x terms. So I'm going to gather my x terms on the left hand side. And to do that, I'm going to need to subtract 5x, this term here, from both sides. If I do subtract 5x from both sides, I've got 8x, take away 5x, which leaves me with 3x. And then I've got the minus 15. Taking away 5x from this side means that that goes, but what we're left with is minus 3. Next, I need to get rid of this constant minus 15. I do that by adding 15 to both sides. If I do that, I'm left with 3x on the left-hand side here, and then equals, and I've got minus 3, and I add 15 to this side. Now, minus 3 add 15 comes to 12. All I need to do now is get rid of this 3 in front of the x. I divide both sides by 3, so I get 3x over 3, which is just simply x, and then I get 12 divided by 3. 12 divided by 3, therefore, gives me x equaling 4. OK, so that's one way of doing this particular question. Do experiment with any of these questions. Try it other ways. You don't have to do it this way. This is what I'd recommend, though, OK? But you might decide that you want to, for instance, group the x terms on the right-hand side. It doesn't matter. You should still come to the same answer. With number two, looking at this one, the two x terms, 4x and 6x, 6x is the bigger of the two x terms. So I'm going to want to group my x terms on the right for this one. So therefore, I need to get rid of this 4x. I get rid of the plus 4x, not because it's a plus here, but because it's a plus in front of this 4x, OK? I do this by subtracting 4x from both sides. So if I subtract 4x from this, I get no x, but just left with the 7. So we've got 7 equals the 6x. Take away 4x gives me 2x. And then I've got the constant minus 5. Now all I need to do is remove this constant, minus 5. I do that by adding 5 to both sides. So we get 7 plus 5, which is 12, and equals, and on the right-hand side here, if I add 5 to both sides, this minus 5, add 5 goes to 0, just leaving me with the 2x. I can clearly see that x equals 6, but what I'm doing next is to remove this 2. I divide both sides by 2. So I'll put the x on the left now. x equals 12 divided by 2, and that comes down to x equaling 6. OK, so with number 3, I decided to give this one purely because I want to put a lot of minuses in it, OK? A negative number here at the start. But again, looking at this, which is the bigger of the 2x terms? Well, it's the 2x. 2x is bigger than minus 5x. So I'm going to choose to group my x terms on the right-hand side. But as I said earlier, it doesn't matter. Do experiment with grouping your x terms on the left. We'll group them on the right, though. And that means that I've got to get rid of minus 5x. And I do that by 
adding 5x to both sides. So adding 5x to the left hand side just leaves me with the constant minus 3 because minus 5x plus 5x is 0x, no x is at all. So we're just left with the minus 3. Add 5x to the right hand side, we've got 2x plus another 5x is going to give me 7x and then the minus 1. I now need to get rid of the minus 1 by adding 1 to both sides. If I add 1 to minus 3, minus 3 add 1 is minus 2. If I add 1 here, that comes to 0, minus 1 add 1 is 0, just leaving me with the 7x. Now I need to get rid of the 7, so I divide both sides by the 7. So I've got minus 2 divided by the 7, and that leaves me with x. 7x over 7, the 7's cancel, just leaving me with the x. Try not to leave it like this. We've got minus 2 divided by 7 equals x. Write x on the left, so we therefore have x equals a minus 2 divided by a positive value, 7, gives me a negative value overall. So you've got minus there, then the 2 sevenths. Okay, take the minus right out the front of the fraction. If you did 2 divided by 7 on the calculator and put it as decimal, you're not going to get an exact value. You're going to have to round it up. So working with fractions, as I pointed out in earlier tutorials on solving these equations, is much better. Okay? Number four. In number four, choose again which term of the x terms is the bigger. We've got minus 3x, we've got minus x. Minus x is bigger than minus 3x. So I'm going to go for grouping on the right. So with this one, I need to get rid of minus 3x, so I add 3x to both sides. Adding 3x to minus 3x gives me 0x or nothing. Then I'm left with the 5. So we've got, therefore, 5 equals 7, the constant. Now I add 3x to the x term here, minus x. 3x added to minus x gives me 2x, so I've got plus 2x there. Now I need to get rid of the 7, I take 7 from both sides. So 5 take away 7 is minus 2, and then if I take away 7 from 7 plus 2x, the 7 take away 7 goes to 0, just leaves me with the 2x. Next, I need to divide both sides by 2 to leave me with the x. So we've got minus 2 divided by 2 equals x. Minus 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, or minus 1. So I write x on the left-hand side, finish with it on the left-hand side always, x equals minus 1. Two more to go, okay? So number 5. With this one, 5x is greater than minus 2x. So I'm going to group my x terms on the right. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So we've got 9 minus 2x plus 2x. Well, that just leaves me with the 9. We add 2x to the right-hand side. So we take our x term here, 5x, and we add another 2x to it. That's going to be 7x, and we've got the minus 1 there. I now need to get rid of this constant, minus 1. So I add 1 to both sides. So if I add 1 to the 9, I therefore have 10. Adding 1 to the minus 1 gives me 0 and just leaves me with the 7x. I next divide both sides by 7 to leave me with that x. So we therefore got 10 divided by 7 equals 1x or just simply x. I write the x on the left hand side now just to finish with and 10 divided by 7. Again, I'm not going to use the calculator here. 7 goes into 10 one whole time, and it leaves me with 3 left over, 3 sevenths, so 1 and 3 sevenths. Gives me the accurate answer rather than using the calculator to give a decimal, which I'm going to have to round anyway. Last one now. So of these two x terms, minus 3x and minus 7x, 
it's minus 3x that is bigger than minus 7x. So we're going to group on the left hand side our x terms. So we're going to need to add 7x to both sides to get rid of this minus 7x. We add 7x now to the left hand side and we therefore have 7 the constant here and then we've got minus 3x plus 7x which is plus 4x equals adding 7x to the right hand side means that minus 7x at 7x is 0 just then leaves me with that too next I need to get rid of the constant 7 it's a plus 7 at the moment the value in front of it is a plus so I need to subtract 7 from both sides subtracting 7 from the left hand side means that 7 take away 7 is 0 leaving me with plus 4x or just simply 4x I need to take 7 from the right hand side so I've got 2 2 take away 7 is now going to be minus 5 Next I have to get rid of the 4 in front of the x, so I divide both sides by that 4. 4x divided by 4 just leaves me with 1x or x, and then dividing the right hand side by 4, we now have minus 5 divided by 4. Therefore, x equals a minus divided by a positive value is minus overall, and then you've got 5 over 4, or 5 quarters, which is one whole one, 4 goes into 5 once with 1 left over so you got 1 and 1 quarter. Okay so hope you're able to uh, see your way through this exercise and uh, hopefully understand how to do this type of question now. Okay well that brings us to the end of this and uh, in my next tutorial in this series what we're going to be looking at is working with equations that have brackets in them. Okay?